Welcome to Stepping on the Mat Podcast, episode 005 with me, Aaron Martinez. Today's guest is a two-time state place winner. In 2020, he became an Iowa high school state champion as a sophomore. And he's a runner-up at 170 pounds as a junior. He's also a folk-style national runner-up. He is currently redshirted at the University of Iowa, looking to move into a starting position for the Hawks next season. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest, Mickey Griffith. Welcome, Mickey. Thank you. Well, so we're here. I haven't seen you for a while, so it's good to be able to catch up with you. And, and this format's even even cooler, I think. So um, you're back on school break. You finished your first year at Iowa. Yeah. So now you're back home. So tell me what it's like coming back home after being gone for the whole school year. I mean, it's kind of weird. I always went to, obviously, a pretty close school because that's what high school is. But being far away from family and friends and I have friends that go to completely different colleges out of state, some of them even in state, but it's just kind of weird because all of a sudden I have to make new friends, new new family, kind of with my wrestling team. It's just different experience, and I actually liked it. Some people don't like it, but I did like that little aspect of being away, being more independent, obviously not fully, right. but yeah. So is uh, everybody back home, your sister, your brother, or... Uh, well, brother, brother moved in Dubuque. He's living like, I think, I think he just bought a house or didn't buy a house, but renting out a place up there. And that's where his longtime home is for, for the future. Um, he's, he still has to finish school, go to grad school and whatnot to be a physical therapist. Um, but so far he's, he loves it up there. And so he's staying up there. My sister, mom, dad, me, we're all home. So that's nice. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you get to see everybody getting worn back up to the house. Did you move all your stuff in? Uh, yeah, I moved all my stuff back in. Obviously not unpacked. That's just the way it is. But Yeah, I guess I was telling you earlier, my daughter just got back from school. She's like, hey, is it cool if I move back in? I was like, yeah, you don't have to ask me that, right? But yeah, that room, you know, her room is not, you know, these kids rooms aren't very big so yeah even coming back from college moving her stuff out of the dorm it like just turned into a giant looks like a giant closet now so yeah some of my stuff is spread all throughout the house some of it's <laughs> up in my room and just never know so um you're you're back you said you're gonna be hanging out with some friends this weekend um you plan on doing any training or is the uh um obviously injury limits that but i'm gonna be doing like physical therapy and lifting because lifting's always important um, and I just got to get into that, but wrestling is a little bit limited right now. And sure. Do you plan on going back to visit any old places like Pablo or anybody like that or coach Roland? Uh, yeah, it'd be nice to do that over the summer and whatnot. See if I can help out there, but the places that I want to go, I'd obviously want to help coach and wrestle with them a little bit, which just kind of adds a little bit you of just state. have one club you yeah one, one club, club. um <laughs> teach them a little. you don't have the full golf set you got one club yeah um just kind of stings a little bit there but i'd love to go back and hang out with those guys see them and just coach and help out with that heck yeah well you know you're welcome at pinnacle university come oh, yeah. look at these guys and show them how to wrestle a little bit they still struggle with it i don't know <laughs> what it is man i can't get these guys to wrestle very great but that's tough yeah it is tough um so welcome back home. Um, so I guess my first question here is, you know, give the audience here a background, you know, how you got into wrestling, you know, maybe some of your experiences through time. Yeah. So my, uh, the way I got into wrestling was actually kind of weird. So you hear all these stories about the people that go division one and onto the next level, they all start in preschool before they like right when they can walk they start stepping on the mat because they've had family members who've wrestled and all this sort of thing and I started in second grade and the reason that I even started like I was a big kid I was tall like had the stature for playing basketball and I wanted to play basketball well apparently I missed basketball tryouts in my second grade <laughs> year so the only practice you were late to yeah what a only, blessing only time I was late um so I miss basketball tryouts. My dad shows me this video of people wrestling and I'm like, Oh, this looks amazing. And I'm just like, let's do it. Like I want to do something. I was always right. an active kid. I played baseball, tried football. I didn't go very far, but, um, always wanted to do something. So I go to, uh, I think it was, no, I did go to Sadell. Sadell was my first place I wrestled. So Would you, who was that? Like the kid, the youth program? 
Yeah, the youth program there. I don't know. I can't remember the coach's names, but guarantee my parents would. Um, so I went there and first practice there, I asked my parents, like, right after practice, I'm like, when's the next one? Right. So right away I fell in love with it, and that's just kind of even how I got into wrestling. Like, well, how did you choose basketball. Sado? Was you guys living near that area at the time? or? Um, well, that was our closest one, and just – heard a lot of good things about it we had one of my baseball teammates he went he went to Sadell for uh, high school and wrestled at Sadell for youth club and his brother and whatnot have all gone there so we heard a lot of great things about Sadell and went there and had a lot of fun with that program but that year I think they also cut the coaching staff uh-huh. so right after I so I went to Super Pee Wee State so like top of where I can be at in second grade and first year wrestling. And I wrestled all the way through the tournament. I lost first round and I wrestle all the way back and I make it to the blood rounds and I win that match. So I'm, I placed and I look at my dad and I go, I placed That's and awesome. the kid on the mat is crying. And I said, and I made a kid cry <laughs> according to my dad. I don't remember that, but um, so I placed and I was just content with that. And I just, I didn't wrestle the next two matches, essentially. I lost. I think I got pinned. And then the next match, I think I also got pinned. But I just was, I was happy with getting eighth place, and I was just content with that. Yeah. So as a first-year wrestler, like. It's interesting your dad chose wrestling. Like, your dad was a football player. Yeah. We played football together at yeah. Lincoln. So um, that's interesting that he picked wrestling for you is, and seeing that as something that would be good for you. He must have seen something out of his his friends and <laughs> some other people in his world yeah i mean like i never liked football so like i i tried football when i was young and i just never really liked it It wasn't my thing well maybe you could start since part of your physical therapy should be recovered (laughs) with throwing you can have a throwing or you can be a quarterback now you're big enough (laughs) that's awesome Um, but just one of those things like i never liked football i was always i was the running back so when you're running back in second grade you don't throw the ball in second grade right they hand it off to you (laughs) And I'm going against all these huge kids, like even bigger than me in their offensive or defensive line. And my offensive line isn't that big. We're we're playing with Lincoln schools. Right. So I'm just getting crushed. I right. Play after play after play. I come out and I sit down for the first time of the game because I was also playing defense. Right. Both ways. Playing both ways. Both ways. And I know that life. Oh, God. Yeah. No, not fun. Not a fun life there. But I was just getting crushed. And I just remember like I'm like, I don't like this anymore. Yeah, so you moved into something that you could crush other people in. Exactly. (laughs) That's excellent. So your first kind of your first year out, you you go down to the Super Pee Wee tournament, and that's a fun tournament too. I mean, it's big, and it's. I remember taking my son to one of those the first time he went to Super Pee Wee, and just him being really overwhelmed with a lot of people. So handling your nerves as a young man like that, that's pretty awesome. So what was the what was the next step for you? So Super Pee Wee, you knew you you was in it, and then boom. So got into Super Pee Wee State. Got eight. Then I wasn't like I was content with it, but then like building upon that, like I know that that's not even that's not even a challenge for some people. Sure. So I'll, the people that I wrestled all year, they've been pinning me. I've been getting beat, and then all of a sudden I get eighth. So like all of a sudden I have this great improvement, and then I have to feed that into next year. So over the off season, I'm playing baseball. I'm not focusing on wrestling. I'm not focusing on any of that. I'm focusing on baseball alone. And I wrestled a year, same thing happens. I'm not doing super hot. I'm doing okay. I'm getting pinned still. I'm just not wrestling my best matches. And then I get to AU districts, which is where qualify for state, top mm-hmm. four go at the time. I think I think top four go at the time. And um, there's no wrestle back for fourth. Like if you lose in the back side, like you're done. Right. So I make it to that third fourth place match and I just give up again and I'm like I'm content with it and my dad promised me that if I made it to AU State I'd get a singlet still waiting on that singlet um we need to get that singlet done (laughs) yeah we got we got some dates coming up you know um but and then I have so how it goes is you have AU dishes. Hold up, hold up. So what was you wearing if you wasn't wearing it? So was you wearing no, like I, I had a single some lip. gym shorts? Because, you know, like, yeah. that was kind of my plan when I was a kid. Once I started <laughs> getting good, too, because I was that kid that kind of, like, had to go through the struggle to, like, yeah. have some progress. 
And I remember I was like, when I got good, I was like, I should probably like wear some like basketball shorts because everybody <laughs> thinks that guy sucks, and they just come out there and terrorize somebody nah. in some like jean shorts or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had I had a singlet. It was just like a a green one because of Sadel and whatnot. So had a singlet, and my dad just promised me. I think it was a, if I remember correctly, um, it was a gladiator singlet. Nice. So it just looked like a gladiator, and I was so obsessed with that. Loved it. Never got it. Um, but then I go to AU State, so it's oh, you have districts, and then in between that was it in Cedar Rapids. That was the districts or state. The state. State was in Wells Fargo for Wells AU, Far- AU okay. kids. State is okay. in Wells Fargo as well. So, so what happens is you have AU State high school or AU districts, high school districts, high school state, AU state. So I have this two week period where I'm just doing nothing, right? Because some of these clubs are shutting down because they don't have kids that qualify. They're just right. taking it off. And so I do go, I went to Priscilla's at this time and loved it there. That's a great coach. Anthony Priscilla. Yeah. I love, I love Anthony. Him. Big shout out to Anthony Priscilla. We'll yeah. have him on the show later on this year. Yeah, He's, he's great. Love that guy. Great coach. Wish I still kept in contact with him, but I'll, I'll make sure that happens. I'll make sure you guys. Oh yeah. Rekindle that connection. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. Um, but so I was training out of there. And then I'm just content with making it to state because, like I said, I got I got my singlet apparently. Yeah, yeah, gladiator time. Yeah. Um, and then I go to state and I go own two. So now I met two of my goals. I placed at state as a second grader first year, and then I've made it to state. And I wasn't happy with going own two, but at the same time I was pretty happy. Like right. that that was my goal at the beginning of the season, make it to state. Yeah. So. And then same thing happens in the off season. I'm just, I'm playing baseball, kind of love baseball. Baseball is my thing. Um, like it's, it was just like my calming thing. Like yeah, wrestling, yeah, yeah. Wrestling, wrestling was, is not calm. No, wrestling's not yeah. calm at all. Um, so the entire off season, I'm just playing baseball. I'm focused on baseball. Love my teammates in baseball. Um, don't really care about wrestling. Wrestling's just kind of one of those things at this time um but i go to next season Mm -hmm. and i about did the same thing like i'm doing pretty i'm doing better like i'm at the top of my age group at this time because it's third fourth grade so i'm in fourth grade now and i'm doing pretty well and then make it to dish get to districts make it to state and then i make it to the blood rounds Mm. so one round short and I've never been to a national tournament, never been to anything like that. Like I'm only comparing myself to these kids inside of the state of Iowa, which is, it's good, but there are kids from other states that are hammers. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not seeing that. So just going about my life still. Um, but I'm starting to realize now, like I love wrestling. Like this is, this is going to be my thing. Yeah. This is where I'm starting to realize it. Um, cause like you can have success in baseball, but how much cons- success can you really have with, uh, without the team? Right. So go- growing up on a team that does decently well, but is never winning state. They're not, um, they're not contending for a state title every single year. Yeah. And there's an aspect of that, that you, you don't really have control over it. Yeah. You know, maybe your teammate doesn't play well that day. Exactly. Maybe the coach is fired up and he's like, losing the traction of the team you know maybe there's not a camaraderie yeah wrestling is individual yeah i mean like so like i realized that i can control my own destiny essentially and that's something that i started liking around that fifth Mm -hmm. and sixth grade year so all of a sudden i'm being more and more independent because now i don't rely on somebody i don't rely on my first baseman to catch every single throw that i throw at them i'm not relying on my catcher to catch every ball that I'm pitching to him. Like I'm not, I'm not relying on that. Yeah. So I start liking that aspect and all of a sudden I'm getting a lot better at wrestling. Um, fifth grade, same thing happens, losing blood rounds. And I'm, I, I just, I don't know how to feel like I've never made it to the second day of state and I'm in fifth grade. <laughs> yeah. Um, sixth grade comes around and, now you still wrestling at say, with the state L team, or have you um, moved on to a different team by sixth grade? I'm, I'm still I'm still wrestling with Priscelli. So third, oh, yeah, that's gra- right, third Priscilla. grade, yeah, third grade. I moved to Priscelli, and I think I, I wrestled with Priscelli for two years. 
So that's third and fourth grade year. And fifth grade year, I I get into Viking Wrestling Club at Grandview. Um, love those coaches. Those coaches were great. Love B. Wright. He moved to Indiana. Shout out to him. Like he he pushed me. He he was the reason that I got so good at wrestling. Um, all the people in there. Uh, there's nobody my size, so I'm wrestling all these high school kids yeah. while I'm in fifth, sixth grade. I'm loving it, and so these guys are pushing me. I have college kids coming in, and they're coaching me. So, right, like, and they're I'm, seeing your potential too. They're like, "Oh, let's get this kid good." Yeah, so like I'm, I'm talking to all these guys. I'm talking to Ty Noller. I'm talking to B. Right. I'm talking to people who have reached the goals that I wanted to reach at the time, and so all these guys are pushing me. They're pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. And all like, I'm getting better and better and better. And I can see that I'm getting better. But fifth grade year was a heartbreak because it was the same result. And I was working my ass off. Right. And all these people, like they're not disappointed in me, but I'm disappointed in myself because I realized like they've been pushing me. Like I want to get good at this and then don't change anything in the off season. I'm still playing baseball because I like baseball. Right. Like, don't go one way too early is what people have always told me. Like, you're going to burn out. And so nothing's happening. I'm just playing baseball. And I think I wrestled. I'm No. No, I didn't. Seventh grade year was the first year. Um, but so sixth grade comes around. Fifth grade, I lose in the boat around. Sixth grade comes around, and I finally, finally break through. And... Same thing happens as Super Peewee State. I'm content. I've made it to the second day. I've placed. I've met my goal of the year. I wasn't planning on being a state champ. I was planning on placing. So I get there, and I'm happy with it. But the thing is, this time was different. This time, I lose that first match, and I come back, and I'm like, this. I hate this. I hate losing, and I win that next match. And it was a, it was a grinder. Right. Um but it it sucked like it was against it was against one of my my best friends at the time too interesting so i've had i've had that happen before it's not yeah. a, it's not a good feeling you yeah, know it's not especially when like was you the winner of it yeah okay so like yeah for his it's not that great yeah so that match happened um i won districts that year too so then after state i had a district dual tournament my turn my team won that was great which was the first kind of like kind of sense of like team aspect sure. in wrestling yeah, too yeah. that was the first time i was on a dual team so that was that was pretty cool seeing like a winning team right away like that that's my first experience and we're winning so that that's also something that i really loved like we could all get together and we would win because we were good so go through that and then um don't change up my clubs. Again, I'm still at VWC. No coach changes, nothing. And this year I'm going to national tournaments. I go to, jeez, uh, I went to so many tournaments. I went to, I think I went to Tulsa this year. I went to Winter Nationals in Omaha. Like I was just traveling, and I loved it. And who who was you traveling with? Was your dad taking you or yeah. was you or was you going with the team? Or? My dad was taking me. My dad was taking me the entire way and it was it was awesome, like traveling with my dad and being able to be with him because he was taking time so that I could get better. Like he was taking time away from work so that I could enjoy this experience and see what this can become. And I'm going to national tournaments and I'm going to one too. I go to Tulsa and I go one too. Like, the biggest national tournament in the country. Like, if you're good, like, you're going to do good at this tournament. Like right. You're coming home with an eagle. That's that's the big prize. That's the big trophy. Yeah, you want to come home with an eagle. And so I go down to Tulsa, and I go on two, and it's such a huge disappointment. But I stick around for the entire tournament. And I'm sitting there with my team. I think I went to Pablo this time now. So switch around, and I'm just with my team, and I'm hanging out. And Pablo... He's showing me around and he's like, look at this match. Like, watch this one. Watch this one. So I'm watching this and I'm just like, these kids are so good. Like, I wish I could be that good. And so it just, it sucks sitting, sitting back and watching people because you want to be out there. You want to be the guy that people yeah. are watching. And 
So we we watched the whole tournament. We watched the finals. Like we're staying there until the finals, which are late at night, mm-hmm. two day tournament late at night. These kids are going at it and they're they're good, like really good. I like some of these kids. Like I think Joey Cruz was there, who's a pretty big name out of high school now, and so I'm seeing all these kids and I I'm like I want to be this good. So right. every time I go back, I'm training hard. Like I want to be like these kids and then go to districts my seventh grade year and I make it pretty far. I think I made it to the quarters or around 16 and I lose. I lose on the front side after coming back from getting seventh place at the state the year before being the district champ and I lose and it's heartbreaking to lose on the front side, but you've always, you got to come back a little bit. And so I come back and, and I lose two rounds prior to even making the third place match, which mm-hmm. is what you need to make. Or you need to make the round before at this time because there's there might be a true fourth. So I lose before that, so I'm out. I don't qualify for state my seventh grade year. And that was that was tough. Like every single year I've made it to state, I've placed at state some years. Like I was I was doing really good, but then I went to all these national tournaments. I wasn't doing good. Like I still feel that I was good at wrestling, but I wasn't doing good compared to these guys. Mm. Um, so don't change anything during the summer. I think I wrestled one or two uh, freestyle tournaments, which was. I think that's when I met you. Yeah. I think that's when I first yeah. seen you wrestle. Was that a freestyle tournament? Yeah. Yeah. I remember but that. I had I had zero success at any any freestyle tournament I went to, because like I don't know why, but. I didn't know what freestyle wrestling was. I was going. I wasn't going to practices. And I was just showing up. Right. And your brother was competing yep. alongside you at that time as well. Yeah. He was in high school at that time mm-hmm. competing. Um, so we were we were kind of like connected together. Like we would always go to the same place, be trained together. And he he's doing decently well at some of these tournaments. And I'm not doing good at all. I'm just kind of going through the motions essentially. Just getting back on the mat staying on the mat so I can mm-hmm. get that little bit of feel during the summer. And that's just like, it wasn't, I think I got teched twice in the first tournament by the same dude in Greco. Like he just launched me. Um, and then comes freestyle and I don't do good. I do. I go home to again. Um, I was at the Lincoln tournament too. So like, this is where I'm, I'm going. Like, right. I, Cause I've been training a little bit with Lincoln now for just a little bit of time because that's where I that was a to big tournament school. though. I remember that being a, yeah. lot of, a lot of people at that tournament. Yeah. There was a lot of people there, but like compared to like a, you say I was like, right. all these things small, it's nothing, but it was something obviously. Um, but I'm still playing baseball, loving baseball. And then eighth grade comes around and something just clicks. And I'm, I fell in love with wrestling instantly. Um, where I'd I'd go to some of these tournaments that I've been talking about and I'd be placing pretty pretty well. Um I'd be winning a lot of these local tournaments and then going to national tournaments and placing and doing pretty well. So that's when I kinda got my first bit of um first bit of success in wrestling where I'd have success at the local tournaments and at some national tournaments where I'd come home with a medal. Um, and I remember like having just like that little bit of success, like that was awesome. And so districts rolls around again and I'm, I'm nervous cause didn't go my way last year. Some of the kids are still back and I think I, I think I win districts again. I don't remember exactly, but I think I win districts again finally. So win districts, move on to state, and I'm looking at my bracket, and I'm like, I can, like, there's a good shot that I win this. So I go, and I'm on the front side after day one. So I'm in the semis. I've placed. I've gotten top six already. Heck, yeah. So that, like, that that's a huge improvement already from not making it to state to being top six after day one. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's awesome. Um, and then that semifinal bout comes around and I'm up and I'm ready and I'm loose, feeling good. 
and I wrestle that match, and I get Kelly three times. So I'm in a front headlock, and guy just knee picks me essentially three times in one match. Didn't learn from the first time. Um, Should have, but hindsight's always twenty twenty. Sometimes you just can't stop it. Yeah, sometimes you just can't stop it. But like lose that match, and I'm just devastated. Like, yeah. Like I felt like I could win that match, and I felt like I could win the whole tournament, but all of a sudden I'm on the backside again like familiar territory but not not good feeling um and in that conti semis match i'm wrestling somebody who i shouldn't beat right and i beat him and i make it to the third place match Mm -hmm. and the entire year i've gone to these tournaments and i had i was still with ibasa and i had championship singlets so i've never worn one of these championship singlets they're gold instead of black, and I love them, but I haven't gotten to wear one because I haven't been in a big tournament that I've been in the finals for. So I look at Pablo, and I'm like, I want to wear the singlet. He goes, go ahead, go for it. So I wear the singlet in the match, and yet again, somebody I shouldn't beat, but end up edging him out, and um, great feeling, getting third place my eighth grade year Mm -hmm. so i get third place there and i know like this is going to be fun like it's going to be good um i quit baseball that summer i go straight to wrestling i've 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 heard like a lot of different um you know i talk to a lot of young people so this similarity of like they make a, a choice at some point to bail the other sport yeah um and then focus on what they're really passionate about so yeah i mean like so i i was still training with kibasa um and paulo was taking care of me like he's teaching me how to wrestle freestyle he's teaching me all this sort of all these sort of things and i go i think i think this year i went to vegas eighth grade and i wrestled both freestyle and greco so i only had to weigh in i think i only had to weigh in one time and I was wrestling 145. Um, I've been going to some local tournaments, doing well, getting first, first or second. And I go to Vegas, and I'm wrestling these guys. And first match I have in Vegas is against somebody really good. And I know that they're good, mm-hmm. and they just blow me out of the water. Lose tech instantly. Um, and then next match comes, still in Greco. And I just lose again, like attacked again. Two so, in, two out. Yeah. So I wrestled two matches in a national tournament that I thought I was going to do good at. Like I just got in third at state in Iowa, but all these kids, like they're good. Right. And so I'm in Vegas for freestyle again. So same tournament essentially. And I wrestle the person who ended up winning the bracket first round. Like, obviously I didn't win that one because he won the bracket. Um, And then I turn around and I wrestle another guy from Iowa who I've wrestled a few times. He's in high school. Um, And I, I beat him very close, very close match. And then the next match blown out of the water again. I think I, I I don't think I got teched. I think I'm at the distance, but it was not a good match for me. Hmm. Um, so I, I'm still not having the national success that I want to have. And it was just, it was hard because of that. So I'm training throughout the entire summer. I, and I think I ended up going to play baseball for a tournament because the team that I was on, like they were, a few of the guys were leaving and weren't going to be able to make a tournament or something. So I was just like, oh, screw it. I'll come back. What position did you play in baseball? <laughs> Anywhere. So growing up, well, I, as you got older a, yeah. around this time frame when you went to the Vegas yeah. tournament. So growing up, I played right field. I was, I was just that kid that played right field, but going up and like learning how to play baseball a little bit more. I was, I was kind of a utility player, but I'd play mostly infield. I'd mm-hmm. play a great spot that I loved was third base and shortstop, like two of the captains of the team right there. But if I needed to, I was a great catcher. I'd love playing catcher. Like people, people hate on playing catcher. Like, but you could wear all the cool gear. Yeah, there's no reason. Um, 
so I was playing catcher and I was pitching sometimes. So like I was just wherever I needed to be, I'd be. And, um, so I was playing, I think I played shortstop or third that entire tournament. I think I pitched one or two times. Um, but I love, loved it, loved it. Um, but now you gave it up. But then I, but I gave it up and I kind of, I kind of just stay committed to that because that's when I, when I want to do something, I just turn full force to it. Now, do you find that like, since you uh, looking back at it, that you set baseball aside, that your progress increased? Yeah. So like some people who have success in AU and youth, some coaches say that tournament's harder than high school state, which I don't think so, but um, you have you have these kids that are doing really good in AU, and all of a sudden they don't turn around in high school. Sure, or they don't even yeah. wrestle in high school. Yeah, seeing those guys as well. Yeah, some of those guys burn out because they've been pushed so much, and they're having all the success at the youth level, but they can't transfer it to high school or even collegiate. Sure, let's talk about that for a second, like yeah. burnout, because we we've both seen it. Yep. You know, from a coaching standpoint, an athlete standpoint, a, an audience. Yeah. perspective that like some of those kids that are just nasty killers when they're young, you, you know, you, and they, you just, where'd they go? I like, mean, what happened to that kid that was there, you know? Yeah. So like burnout is a very real thing. And I've been learning that more and more now. Like we had, we had one of our recruits coming in for this next year and he, he doesn't, he doesn't sign with us and instead yeah. he's going to be a Navy SEAL. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so I mean, respect to him. Respect. Like, yeah, complete respect to him. And he he just said that one day he woke up and he just didn't want to do it. And like, is it like he's been pushed so much and all of a sudden you don't want to do it? Like, that's a real thing, and it's something that like some athletes like we don't want to happen. Like we love the sport, but sometimes you can't control it. Well, if he becomes a seal. Um, or goes to the progress, goes through the process to become a seal. Yeah. Um, he'll be challenged by that again. Yeah. But there won't be, um, it'll be a different type of push and we'll, yeah. we'll see if that helps shift him into a different direction. I mean, like, I feel like, so when I, if I go away from wrestling, um, there's obviously going to be something that I want to replace that. Yeah. And I feel like he he found something that could replace that and like that's that's a good thing because for sure because when you're an athlete like you train really hard especially as a wrestler like you train physically you train mentally like mm -hmm. it's it's a rough rough thing and all of a sudden you can't you can't just drop that like that right. is a part of it and, and he won't like no. it'll always be there that skill will always be there whether he picks up i mean a lot of seals train in jujitsu yeah you know like jocko and all these guys that do it like and that's pretty much, I mean, it's it's kind of a standard. You have to train jiu-jitsu. You have to train martial arts, yep. right? So maybe you'll find passions in that, or he'll cycle back through. And Yeah. But if not, you know, being a SEAL is pretty, uh, pretty it's, I mean, it's the elite. Yeah. So, I mean, so, but burnout's very real. I kind of fear it. I don't want it to happen. So let's, uh, I want to shift focus here. I, not that we, uh, we ended off with your eighth grade year. I want to save some of the, the high school stuff for a little bit later <laughs> in our conversation. Um, but I do want to get right to, I think, uh, a really strong point of interest, I'm sure, that people listening here and knowing that you're on on this podcast here is they want to know what it's like to be in the Iowa wrestling room. Yeah. Um, well, that kind, of, that kind of feeds off of a little bit of high school, like mentally. Like, I mean, I know there's tons of talent in there. Yeah. So <laughs> going from, you know, going from wrestling at Lincoln with coach Roland and, you know, moving into, you know, with the brands brothers and Morningstar and all these yeah. other big names with big talent in the room. Yeah. So like going into that room, it's, it's kind of crazy because most of those guys in there, like they've accomplished what I've wanted to accomplish. Right. Like both the brands brothers, like they've, they, they've accomplished what I want to accomplish. They've been, in, they've been at the world level. They've been in silly champs like it's what i want to do and so going into that room it's it's not terrifying to me tell me about your first day of practice that's what i that's what i want to know first day of practice uh <laughs> was actually so i got up to iowa city and 
they're they expect you to train like it's not required you don't have to mm-hmm. they can't require that yet um so my first practice was actually without a coach so i go up there and i kind of so is it like an open mat yeah open mat we have we kind of have like a a time that most upperclassmen and whatnot go in so all of us freshmen hear about this and we go in and we grab each other and we're wrestling each other and we're watching these other guys wrestle and like they're going hard so (laughs) it's 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 just weird because in high school like you don't you don't go as hard as you do in college right um seasons longer in college too so you go in there and it's a hard practice well you didn't really have anybody to really push you did you in your practice room in high school no but i mean when i came in and wrestled with you there was i was was looking around the room like (laughs) hey nobody's gonna partner with this dude except for me so no but i went to big game at the time and i was wrestling guys like wyatt volker take noctaborn hunter garvin graham grambrill like all these guys like dylan even wrestled me uh we had skylar st john in there someone who just graduated from iowa state like we had all these guys coming in and they were wrestling us and they were wrestling us top guys and so we're we're all pushing each other so like that's where i'm getting every push right so so you're back in the open mat things are you you got these guys you're squaring up with so again with these guys and they're good too like these guys are pushing me just as much as tate wyatt and all Mm -hmm. those guys so they're all pushing me i'm pushing myself as much as i can and like it, it, it's not going my way again. So growing up, practice rooms weren't always my best friend. Like I'd get my butt kicked. I went first practice at Pablo. I wrestled Kyle Wascalia. He obviously turned out really great in high school and college. Like great wrestler. Mm-hmm. And that was my first practice at Pablo. And I was late for that practice too. So so you deserved it. So I deserved it. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, hard to admit that. But that would have been I me over the corner, like sick him on him he's late <laughs> yeah no so wrestled him my first practice that was pretty rough but it was nothing nothing like being in the iowa wrestling room where these guys are hammering on you and you're wrestling the top guys in the country and some of the top guys in the world even so come first like actual practice and practice isn't even that bad like I can't remember what we did, but I wasn't, I was in shape again because I'd been wrestling throughout August, September, and then practice finally starts in October around my birthday and October 15th, big shout out. (laughs) Yeah. So get around, get around there and season starts and it's not, it's not as hard as I thought it would be. Like people, people make it out to be this crazy hard spectacle thing. Like all, like you've just got to get mentally ready. Like all these, all these things are, it's it's mental. Mm -hmm. So you walk into that room and it's not the fact that every single one of these guys can just beat me up. Like Mm -hmm. it's the fact that like you, you walk into the room and you want to be the guy that's beating other people up. Like it's just a mentality switch. Right. So I get into that room first day of practice, wrestling my teammate and things are going my way. Um, and we get into the, some weird positions, and I can ask questions. I ask questions to coaches all the time. Like, it's it's not, like, I've always been taught, like, if you have a question, ask it. Right. Don't, don't be afraid to ask it, and that goes in the Iowa wrestling room, too. Like, it's just, it's a normal practice room. Yeah, that's why I want to talk about this, because a lot of things become projection. You know, we get short glimpses when, we, when yeah. the Brands brothers are being interviewed or they show the Iowa practice room. So, yeah. Uh, so, it's it's not, it's not and our projection over here, it's actually something much more unique and, and connected. I mean, yeah, it's not like we're this year we were number two in the country. So like, obviously it's going to be different than some other schools. Like we're doing something different. Right. Um, but like you get into these practices and they're, they're normal practices for me. Like I went to, so Dylan who ran big game, he went to Iowa too. So like, these practices, like, they feel similar to me. Yeah, very similar to it, um, right. Like, they're not these long, drawn-out, three-and-a-half, four-hour practices. Like, they are normal practices that are just tough. 
because the guys in there are tough. Yeah, give us a kind of give us a glimpse, you know, like let's look at like mid season. You're in mid season and like your typical your typical practice consists of what? Um, that depends on the day. So Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday's our off day kind of. So um, but like a normal day, normal practice is kind of uh, we get into it, we get warming up and some guys are on the bikes, some guys are jogging, they're stretching out, just normal what you do in kind of like high school wrestling, even middle school for some people. Um, but that part's normal. It might be a little bit more intense because you're in an intense room and it's you're blowing your lungs out essentially. Like you want to get tired right away and you got to get that sweat rolling, all that. So you're doing more sprints maybe. Like mm-hmm. that, that's about it. And then we get a little bit of time to stretch out fully. And then we're right into drilling and we're just working on stretching each other out sometimes. Sure. We're drilling. Um, but it's, it's nothing out of the ordinary. So we're just drilling, we're drilling, we're drilling. Tom and Terry step in or even morning star. One of those guys steps in and they show us a technique and we go out, we drill it, come back, show us another one, go out, drill it. And we go get a drink. Like we're we're constantly like drinking water. Like um, water's good. Like, yeah, it keeps you hydrate before you dehydrate. Yeah, keep it keeps you going. Like it gives you a little bit of energy. So we have we have that water in there that's just keeping us going a little bit. And um, like everybody, you don't focus on cutting weight in practice. Mm-hmm. That's something that none of us do. We don't just sit there and we're worried about our right. weight. We're worried about wrestling. We, we wrestle. That's what we came to college to do. We wrestle. So we're wrestling and we're getting water breaks. We're getting ready to go live and we're doing executions. We're getting our heart rate up. We're spiking. That, that's what we call it. There. We just spike. So we're in there and then we go live and it's just normal life. It's like, it's like high school except the people in there. Do you have a partner that you work with a lot that's kind of your main... Your main um, training partner. Oh. Or you guys just you guys get flipped a lot in there. Everybody everybody wrestles everybody yeah, around wrestles your weight. Everybody. So I've wrestled people from I've wrestled people at seventy four and I wrestled people at heavyweight. Like that's that's kind of my range as being an eighty four pounder. A uh, big eighty four pounder. So Yeah, you're looking big right now. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. yeah. So I wrestle I wrestle those guys there and that's that's how it is. Like you don't have a you don't have one specific partner that you just go with mm-hmm. like maybe some of these top guys like like you have people that are like oh yeah I want to go with this guy today and you just you respect that right um but you don't have like there's not one specific guy that I go with I like going with everybody now have you gotten close to anybody that on the team that's like your boy anybody? I mean everybody they're all my Good. brothers Good. like that's the way that that team is like we're we're brothers like there's nothing that's going to take us apart there's nothing that's gonna like like we're in it together we're, yeah. we are brothers yeah that's a, a comparison that a couple of the guests on the shows have asked me about like the they you know we make these these phrases like going to war yeah right like and they like oh, i don't mean any disrespect to being like like the military i said no but that's the part about the military that makes yeah. like the veteran community so strong is that that brotherhood yeah. You know, and, and you have that, like, you do everything together. You train together, you work together, you're there during emotional time, you're there to help build each other up, yeah. you know, and that camaraderie makes makes that brotherhood just tight. You yeah. Know? It's I a mean, band of brothers. I mean, like, so we obviously didn't finish the season that we wanted to. We got second. So we're all together. Um, we don't even have a national champ this year. But we, we're all together, and we're all there for, through – this and that mm-hmm. and like there's there's no there's no off to it like if if somebody needs us there like we're going to be there right and that's just that's just the way it is like we are brothers okay so we talked a little bit about um what about the coaching adjustment did you see like um between you know going from high school with coach Roland into the brands brother did you see some similarities and what were the differences um, there weren't, there weren't a lot of differences actually. Like they're there to push you. And if you need something like they are, they're still coaches. They're still, 
people like they will help you um like there, there's not there's not a lot of differences like it's a lot of a lot of similar things to say coach roland as well like he's been there he's pushed me he's mm-hmm. just like supported you and yeah loved there, on you like there's there's not a lot of differences um good so it was it wasn't that much of a change for me like only change was being where i was yeah just campus life and yeah getting signed up and, and i've always <laughs> always felt i've always felt at home like when it comes to where the wrestling room is like yeah for sure going, there's a mat it's yeah. like home no yeah. matter what yeah yeah so like going from pablo to big game and big game to lincoln and lincoln to iowa like there's a mat it's home yeah you can lay down and feel comfortable there yeah for sure no so, laying down so you're uh yeah not on your back at least, <laughs> unless you're freestyling and you're bellying out right yeah um so we got you know you're finished you're finished with your first official year in college um, and now you're going to be the sophomore. So let's talk a little bit before we move into your, your, um, your season. Let's talk about the upcoming recruiting class. Do you know much about the upcoming recruiting class? Um, I mean, a little bit, uh, some of like, I grew up with some of these guys a little bit cause most of them are from Iowa again. Like last two years we've had, I can't, I can't even count on one hand, maybe two, how many kids we've had from Iowa. So we have all these kids coming in and it's, it feels just like, so during freestyle season, like the entire state of Iowa gets together. That's how it mm-hmm. is. Yeah. So that's just how it feels now. Like we are, we're all together and there's not people that are like singled out and like we're, we're all together. And I think that, I think they understand that. And that's awesome. So. Yeah. I think, you know, the media and people yeah. like to put pressure on people, yes. right? You know, and the last name we were talking about. Um, but, you know, we got like Ryder Block. We got Keeter. We got, yeah. um, who else is in that class? We got uh, Arnold. Arnold. Gabe uh, Arnold. He just he just won. He just won U20. U20, uh, yeah. U20 US Open. And that was, that, was a, that was a really good bracket. Yeah. Yeah, so. you were there. So maybe we should just, that's a good segue um, from Gabe Arnold's U20 yeah. at the US Open. Tell me your experience going down there and, and seeing that. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't there to wrestle, but I was sitting at the dorm room and watching all of my teammates. So I'm, I'm just doing my best to watch every single teammate that I have, incoming teammates this year. So we have people who are competing at the senior level who are still eligible for like U23. So they're going down to Geneva, Ohio in June to wrestle for the U23 title so they can be on the U23 team because they didn't make it in the senior division. Right. So we have all these guys doing that. And we also have people doing really well. We mm-hmm. have people just like kind of just going crazy essentially. Um, but it was just, it was, it's, it's an amazing, amazing thing to watch. And you see, you see guys who are getting to their, like, they're getting up there and they're doing well and all that, all that stuff. So like you, like you just like seeing it and you're seeing their hard work pay off. Yeah. So, cause some of us freshmen this year, like. We only wrestled one tournament, some of us. Um, I was lucky enough to wrestle two. But and that was the Soldier Salute and the I went I went to Luther. Luther, yeah. Luther and then I went to Soldier Salute. Um but some of us only wrestled one one tournament the whole year. So like they don't get a bunch of time out there and wrestling live. Like live in the room is different than live out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for sure. Yeah, so you have that, and um, you're seeing their hard work pay off, and me being a little bit sidelined, like, I'm seeing all these guys put in the work. Like, I'm over there on the bike, and I'm working still, mm-hmm. but these guys are they're going at it. They're working. They're going hard. Like, I wish that I could be out there wrestling with them, and I'm seeing all their hard work pay off, and it's kind of just, it's awesome. Now, which guys on your team competed at the, at the U.S. Open? We had a lot. We we had a lot from HWC and Titan Mercury. 
Like we had. Now, what's Titan Mercury? I know, obviously, you got the HWC shirt yeah, on right there, yeah, the yeah. Hawkeye Wrestling Club. But yeah. what's this other one you were saying? Uh, Titan Mercury is kind of. I, I don't even know exactly, but it's like they help out a lot of wrestlers. Um, they sponsor a lot of wrestlers so that they're able to come and they're able to. Now, is that a mix? Is that just mainly Iowa guys? Or is that it, a mix with a mix, everybody? Mix okay. with everybody in the entire country. Like you have guys from. Um, I think I think some of the guys on from Penn State were even under Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, so like they they sponsor these guys and they That's awesome. let them go out and wrestle because like wrestling's like no other sport like there's not a lot of money in wrestling. So yeah, that's another conversation we'll, yeah. we'll have here after a little bit about um, just like you know it's the tough the future right yeah. the future once you're past college and it's like where do I go with this thing you know yeah. money money always steps in at some point. So, so what are some, what's one of the, what's a couple highlights from the U S open that you remember that was like big for you emotionally or big for you? Like, uh, just on the, something that happened on the mat that was pretty, pretty cool to see. I mean, so we have obviously like our incoming recruit, Gabe Arnold, like Mm -hmm. he, he wins it and now he's ranked number one in the country at 170 pounds, seventh in the nation. Like, um, like that was great seeing yeah. that was amazing because I'm always cheering for these guys' success mm-hmm. because like they are they're still my brothers they're coming in and they're my brothers like they know that and the the, the talent just increases too you know yeah. the the skill and the talent and he he's another training partner for me like I'm gonna get better he's gonna get better yeah like that that's the goal um but like there's there's not one particular moment like I mean that one was a great moment because he he won it like hats off to him and whatnot but like there's not one particular moment like I loved watching every single one of my teammates wrestle and like just seeing what they can do like I came back for a little bit and I wrestled and wrestling these guys like they're tough and seeing them show it like it's just it's amazing like there's there's not one specific moment at all just watching it and like see it all come to kind of fruition yeah like, they're that's the magic man yeah hard work pays off so hard work pays off for sure so uh you've you were obviously injured in your last competition um i just seen that the other day so <laughs> i was like i was like i wonder if he's gonna have a cast on or something when he yeah. comes in because i was you don't get the result on the video you know i could have just texted you but i was yeah. i wanted to see for sure myself with my own eyes so you have uh this brace on your arm yep. so um yeah that's that's unfortunate yeah you know we were talking earlier about you you know your um your would have been your senior year you got injured in high school and it's the yeah. same as tad you know the same thing happened to yeah. him and we got these parallel stories that are happening between you and your brother you know yeah. it's kind of neat yeah but you know uh so tell us a little bit about what's going on with your arm and how long it's going to take for that to before we see you on the mat again well got surgery sadly uh, we were praying that it wouldn't wouldn't would heal without surgery because right. it wasn't it wasn't a full tear but tore my ucl a little bit during a wrestling match and I've been working since January to just get it better. Like since I didn't dislocate it, I didn't do anything horrible to it. Like it should have healed, but I came back on the mat and it didn't feel good. So I talked to my athletic trainers. I talked to surgeons. I talked to doctors, like all these guys and they're right by my side the entire time. They're saying what's best for you. They're asking me what I want rather than, Hey, you're, going to go under you're going to get surgery like they're not forcing it upon me mm-hmm. and i'm like i'm gonna i want to get surgery like i want this thing to be fixed yeah um yeah so got surgery and the recovery's long um like i could be out all of next year i could be back before so how's that gonna work season. so you redshirted you yep. redshirted this year as, as a freshman so how does that work with um with an injury like that if you take the if you decide to take this next season off so obviously I'll still be on the team. Um but I'd take a medical hardship year is if I don't compete at all. Um but like if I'm back before the season even starts, like I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. yeah. So it kinda just it kinda depends on 
what's going on with it. I could take a medical hardship. I could just go on with my life and let it happen. Like, sure. Like sometimes, sometimes there should, there could only be five years for me in wrestling because of my red shirt, but now it's six. Mm -hmm. So like, you don't know exactly. So So who's in that lineup with you right now? So you're going to, you, your plan, everything goes well is to wrestle 184. Yeah. 184. So what, what would, uh, who's in that lineup with you for your team? Whoever wants to be there. Whoever wants to be there. Like there's, there's not a set guy. I mean, obviously we have guys there, but there's not one set guy that's going to start 184. So speaking of news, so, um, NCAA final or NCAAs. Yep. Did you, where was you at during this? Did you get to, to view it, watch it? I went, I went to Tulsa. I was not, I wasn't like back, kind of backstage, so to say, but I was up, I was watching it. How was that energy in there? It was crazy. So like on TV is completely different than being in person. I've been in person a few times, but being on a team is so much different than being, than just being like a fan. So I'm there and I'm cheering for all of our guys and like all of us were talking and we're we're like oh who what's going on here what's going on there what's going on there like we're we're still paying attention to these other matches yeah yeah but like our guys when they're wrestling like our focus is laser focused on that one mm-hmm. map and if they're wrestling at the same time like we're we don't know where to watch right right it's like it's, it's like watching a tennis match yeah right? so, i feel like that as a coach sometime during tournaments i'm like i feel like i'm just like yeah. ping-ponging all over the place yeah, it sucks sometimes like there was there was no relaxing there because we qualified ten guys, so yeah. they're always wrestling. Like we have somebody on the mat almost all the time. So it's just it was a crazy experience. Like even just being in that fan atmosphere. So we have people who are winning like they're going off, like um we just have people who aren't they they aren't doing what they hoped. Right. Um, what they worked for all year and well we all know about that yeah i mean that that happens to everybody it's not just it's not just a one person thing and so we have all this happen and like we it's a lot of emotion and i think i think even even being on the mat is different than watching it from a fan's perspective so when you're on the mat you don't necessarily hear all the fans but when you're air and you're kind of being that fan you feel it you feel it <laughs> and it, it's just a different experience for sure so give me uh give me two of your favorite highlights from from the ncaa's it can be hawkeye related Ooh. it can be non-hawkeye related i mean being there that, just being there that was one. that was just a highlight itself because i wasn't planning on going but then i'm last second i'm going yeah and so loved that. That was a fun experience, just like figuring things out on the fly and not knowing what's next exactly. So I go down there, and that was just a highlight itself. And just honestly, it was just being around everybody. So like it was non wrestling related entirely were some of the highlights because I'm with I'm with these people and they're with me and just being together. And it was genuinely like a family like i didn't have anything planned out and i'm just figuring it out on the fly and they're like yeah just come do this with us so that's awesome did your did um did your dad your parents come down and join none of my family went just your just your brothers yep just me and my brothers that's awesome so obviously the the big deal at the ncaa's was the spencer lee loss right and i know you are we already talked earlier we're not you're not going to speak for spencer but maybe just kind of like highlight like um you know your personal feelings about not not what happened after but just the match the match itself i mean i because i know in that in that yeah. arena it probably just was like i can't i know i talked to somebody that went there and they were just like the energy was just sucked out and it was so strange afterwards but like personally where your guys is, you know where you're coming from i mean the guys that were up and watching with me like we were, we didn't know what happened at all. Um, but like, I think, I think he even said this, like 
it's another match. Like, yeah, it, it happened. Like, there's nothing that he can do to go back and fix that. But like, that's kind of that's kind of how I took it as well. So just like getting closer to him and whatnot, and like it, the energy was just sucked out of there. Yeah. Um, but like, that's what we all. It's that's for fans. Yeah. That's what they live for. You know, yeah. they live for the ups. And we, you know, we experienced the downs with him too. All of us were hurt to see yeah. him not be able to get that. But having him speak on it later on and just, you know, put in a in a reality for us that are fans that are not there on the mat is like it's another match. I lost. Like mm-hmm. let's 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 go forward with it. Yeah. So, but um, great NCAA finals just to, to watch the finals as well. Um, yeah. Is there any particular match in the finals that you? that you just remember just feeling feeling the crowd's energy and it's got to be Yanni's fourth like seeing that seeing that in person um was just it, it's crazy like that guy's dreams did come true for sure and man. the entire arena is standing up standing ovation for Yanni there so that's got to be that's got to be one of the it, it's a good memory and something that I obviously strive for yeah so. man your whole life you've been trying to strive for that, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Exactly. Um, so we'll get off wrestling for a second. So you're at the University of Iowa, your freshman year, you're an art major. <laughs> so yeah. like, it's something that me and you share in common, right? Yep. Like I said, we got a couple things in common. We're both October babies. Yep. You have the same birth date and birth year as my daughter. Yep. And you're an art major. So you're already my bud. Yeah. So like, what do you like? Let, let's talk about art for you. So you said you want to like ceramics is kind of, you found a kind of a passion and love for that. Yeah. So, um, senior year, I kind of was just filling my schedule a little bit in high school and I was recommended to take a ceramics course. So I took that ceramics course. I was just first year didn't really know anything. Um, had a few people tell me about it, tell me to take it. And I just, I kind of fell in love with it. Now get, dive us into the class a little bit. So like when see ceramics, <laughs> we always think of like the little, little, uh, cup that the kid brings home in second grade. Yeah. You know, we're obviously evolved past, yeah. past that. Right. So like the ceramics that I'm talking about, like I'm making, I'm making vases, I'm making things that are like, like they're usable. Like I'm making bowls, I'm making mugs, I'm making other things. And it's just, it's an awesome class. Cause I'm getting that hands-on experience for doing something artsy. And I was like <laughs> growing up, I didn't think of myself as an artist. But all. was you, you was creative. Was yeah. you a creative kid? And yeah, dr- I, do you like to like, draw a lot? And... I don't draw. I hate drawing. Can't draw. But you like working with your hands. Love working with my hands. So like, getting with ceramics it kind of connects to wrestling a little bit because sure. like I just noticed like a little bit of similarities like when you're on the wheel and you're throwing and you're making something like in wrestling you're always taught like keep your elbows in like use your core right and use your hips bring your hips to the party um and that's that's kind of similar to ceramics like you're you're bent down over the clay and you're personal and you're there and you have to use and you have to use form yeah you have yeah. you just have to like you have to be gentle you have to be at the same time you have to be very precise and you have to use a lot of you can use some of your body weight behind it to be able to do certain things and it's just it's one of those things that i connected to wrestling and it was an instant connection and i throughout the year i was just getting in there as much as i could so before wrestling season even started i was in there and they had open studios Mm -hmm. and I was just going to open studio and it was right after school and I'd stay there until they told me to get out. That's awesome. So I was just in there and I was just doing whatever I wanted. I was making what I wanted. I was just having fun. Well, you talked about this thing um, earlier when we were talking about baseball is like, you got to have something outside of that wrestling that was like giving you some peace and just kind of taking your mind off of it. And what a, what a interesting and cool and creative way to be able to do that is working with your hands and, and being, cause it, you know, it's not like you have to talk and, yeah. you know, to do that. Yeah. I mean like my, uh, my wrestling coach at the time, Jake Waters, like I got hurt and then he kind of made the joke and he's like, wow, same time you lost your yin and your yang. I'm like, <laughs> wow. That, yeah. That's, it's a, 
that that is a connection like one thing it was just kind of like hard and physical and like it was a grind yeah. all the other thing was just relaxing and yeah it was i mean it was a little bit physical but it wasn't like physical like wrestling physical so like at the same time i lost both the things that calm me down and the thing that like just gets me going right so right, right. yeah that's how i kind of got into ceramics a little bit like and shaping too. I think shaping oh, yeah. has a lot to do with wrestling too. You got to shape character. You got to shape yeah. your physical body. Um, and then the the process of making something is the outcome of it. Yeah. So and you're you're still in that shaping process yourself. Yeah. And that, the crazy thing about like ceramics as well. So you can have something on the wheel that you love, and there's like a it's like a two three week period before you get the final result. So you have something on the wheel that you love. That thing might not come out. Mm. that thing might get blown up by somebody else's piece that could be blown up by your own piece. Um, like you, you don't know what can happen between when you have it and when it's finished. Like once it's finished, you can still drop it. I've had that happen with mm -hmm. some people and I've seen it personally and I, I feel heartbroken for them. I've never done that personally, but like seeing a piece of art that they've created that they love and they drop it, sucks like it's just like all of a sudden you're making a painting and you drop your you drop it and it's all smeared and it doesn't yeah. look good and like you're just mad at it and you have to throw it away like it, 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 it won't turn out exactly how you wanted it to so ceramics is like in that way it's just it's crazy because instead of an instant outcome where drawing could be i have to wait three two three weeks before i even see a little bit of progress like i can be like i have to put a glaze on it to make it food safe and whatnot so i can be glazing it and it looks like it's a puke green almost right and like just a color you don't want it to look and then you put that thing into kiln and it can come out so many different colors like it's not yeah. going to be puke green at the end like it could be a blue it could be a very beautiful blue so it's just kind of like one of those things where I'm I'm sitting there and I'm I'm like with this piece and I feel connected to this piece but it might not come out. And sure. it's it's just similar to wrestling cuz like I might put all my all everything into this one thing and it might not come out. But your end goal is to have everything come out. So Yeah. That's a that's a really neat connection. Um so speaking of things coming out and not coming out, yeah. the way you visualize it and see it and train for and practice for, um, the state finals um, of your sophomore year. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we think getting into high school a little bit now would be would be good. So, um, I mean, I I go to Lincoln, went to Lincoln, and first match was against bon uh, or, or, it was against Urbandale. Um, so I go out there, first ever varsity match, and I think I get a major in my first ever varsity match against somebody who's older than me, somebody who who's pretty good at wrestling. And so that kind of just, that kind of starts my high school career. Like, I'm sorry, my high school career on a, on a like strong, strong lead there. Um, and then we go to Independence and one of the, one of the toughest tournaments in the country in high school like it's not it's not up there with some other school others like iron man and whatnot but for what the state of iowa can go to yeah like it's it's a tough tournament and so we go and i lose first day um which puts me in the silver bracket so i can't even place top eight at this point i can only get the ninth which sucks um and i lose first round <laughs> on the second day and then I go all the way back and I get 11th so started off the season real strong with a win and then get 11th at a tough tournament like it's okay but it's not what I wanted right um and then throughout the year I'm just getting better and better and better and come the Atomo tournament um I I'm finally ranked I think I was ranked 12th so like the bottom and looking at the bracket like there's still two people in my district alone above me and you have to get placed top two at districts. isn't that always fun you're like Come yeah on, can i get a break here yeah so that happens and 
go to the Waukee tournament, the Algaris and duels, and I do well, um, beating some guys, losing some matches that I shouldn't lose, just a little bit banged up nearing winter break. But so I get done with that tournament and turn right around in January and I'm still a little bit banged up, but feeling healthy overall and just keep on going Nash or not nationally ranked. I was ranked in the state still. And then come CIML time my freshman year. And that might have been one of the worst tournaments I've ever wrestled. <laughs> um, I was, I think I was the four seed in that bracket with, or I think I was the five seed actually with the guys above me being ranked top six in the state, yeah. I think. And then one of the guys that I lost to at the point was ranked below me. Um, so I lose first round and I do not have a good tournament. I think I lose the next round again. I think I went, I think I went one in one in three at the tournament overall. So start of the year off. Great. And we're ending, we're closing on in on districts and I'm not doing good. And these guys are all doing really well. Um, but I just, I just wasn't doing good and get come districts. And at this time I'm still with Pablo. He's there at districts cause it's close to where a lot of his kids go. Like we're in Johnston and I make it to the semis and I lose to Cade Moss and, um, I have to wrestle back for true second. Like yeah. that's, that's the goal. Like I have to make it to state and, um, Kate Cade wins, so I do have a true true second wrestle back. Um and the guy that loses um doesn't go to state. The guy that wins goes to state yep. and gets off clean with it. Um and I lose that again. I lost to the same guy. I lost to at CIML first round. And so that comes and that stings. I I remember very vividly right after that, I just ran off and I went into a room where I didn't think anybody could find me and just started crying. And yeah, Pablo, Pablo comes by and he's got the tracker on you. Yeah. I don't know how he found me, but he found me and he, he just starts talking to me and calms me down almost instantly. Like I trust this guy. He, he trusts me and he put his faith in me. And that summer, like something clicked and I'm going full force ahead. Like I feel like nothing can stop me almost. And we get to freestyle in Greco state and I get second at state for freestyle. And I think I got third or fourth in Greco. Didn't qual. I didn't, I didn't qualify in Greco for Fargo, but I go to Fargo that year later in the summer and I go two and two. Um, not a great showing. Made a few mistakes that I can still remember. Um, but so I go on to the sophomore year, which is when I win state and I start the year off really hot. Um, first duel against Urbandale, they don't send out a guy. Um, I'm ranked, I think I was ranked six in the state at the time. Mm -hmm. So like people were recognizing what I was doing and it felt good. And I I go to Independence, and in my bracket, we have, I think we had two or three guys ranked over me in the state already in just that one bracket. Um, one of them being in 2A, actually. Um, so first day, kind of just run through it. Easy day. Um, and I can see the improvement already. Um, second day comes, and the guy I have first round is really good. And... He, he, uh, I think he, I think he placed at state that year. And then the next guy I have got third at state that year, um, in the year prior, I think as well. So he had done really well. He's ranked above me. He's ranked second and I beat him. And so I'm in the finals now against somebody from Simley. Um, and... <laughs> that match was crazy. I 
who went upper body threw I threw him and they called us out of bounds so I got no points which shouldn't have been the case um but you got to wrestle no matter what yeah I was just telling this story about my experience <laughs> where I didn't wrestle after I didn't get the call you know just like, yeah. I was stuck on it yeah so like I just knew I couldn't stick like just beyond that yeah and like I've been working all summer on freestyle I haven't been working on top but I know that I'm really good top wrestling. Yeah. And that's where I was going to make, make my money almost. And I've turned, I've turned people. I've been able to just wrestle to my ability and that was great. But then I choose down and I get out right away. So we're on our feet, one nothing match. And it's, it's kind of intense because like, I don't know where, where this is going to go. Like this could go in my favor. He could do something in, matches over eventually right matches over real quick sometimes but nothing happens in the second period we're still in a one nothing match and he chooses the bottom and i've got to write him out like write out wins and it's a two minute period so it's not like it's a 30 second write out in overtime like this is a long write out like i have to just stick it to him mm -hmm. and manage to do it and that was just a crazy high right there so i'm feeling real good i'm wrestling really well and just going out throughout the year, and I'm just wrestling and wrestling and wrestling, and I'm doing really good. And come the Ed Winger tournament, first time I another tough tournament. Yeah, for second time I wrestled that tournament, I guess. But Lincoln doesn't wrestle that tournament anymore, though. Not anymore. They didn't my senior year either. Um, but went to that tournament, and I'm wrestling the number one ranked guy in the finals, and I had coaches coming up to me telling me good luck, like. I'm a sophomore, ranked second in the state, shouldn't necessarily like be at this position. Yeah, we just want to see you do good. Good yeah. luck. So I have some of these coaches telling me good luck, and the match finally comes, and it's a hard match. And I make so many mistakes. Like All my mistakes were just huge to this guy. And I lose. I lose very bad, very poorly. And that night, I shut off my phone. I didn't get on my phone at all. Like, I didn't talk to anybody. Like, I went up to my room, turned off the lights, just laid there. I couldn't even sleep. Yeah. But I knew that, like, something had to change. So, and I knew I'd get my shot at him again before state even. So, go throughout the year, still haven't lost. And then I get to CIML and going through that bracket, doing real well. And... I get to the finals and I wrestle him again. And I told my co I told Roland right before that. And I go, I'm not going to take a shot because every single time I took a shot in that pre previous match, I got taken down and he just did some weird sit out Slug thing go around or something. So I just, I said, I'm not going to take a shot. And I was wrestling that match defensive, like just crazy defensive. And it gets to the second period at zero, zero. Like my plan's working right now. Yeah get to the second period, I choose down, and I get out. I get out pretty quick. Um, so plan's still working. And then we get to the third period, one nothing, and I ride him out for like 40-something seconds. So like, I'm like, wow, this, there's a huge shot that I get this. And then into the third period, he takes a shot. I don't expect it because time's winding down, and he takes me down. And he wins 3-1. So all of a sudden, I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm, I'm just, I'm stuck here. Right. Like, this shouldn't, this I've shouldn't be there. happening. I again with them. Yeah. So I didn't know what to do. So my coach is like, we're just training and training and training and training. And Waukee, Waukee reaches out to my coaches and they're like, like, if he wants to come in, like, let him come in here and like, we'll, we'll wrestle with him, like get him with some of these other guys. And I go in there and I wrestle with them and they help me out a lot. And then come district time, win districts. There's not, not a huge issue with that. And then I'm the second seed of state. Um, come that first round of state, all of a sudden, all of my like anxiety just comes out at once. Oh man. So I'm sitting there and I'm on the, I mean, I'm on the mat, have to wrestle. Like there's, there's How's no there getting out day? of it. Yeah. How's there for your, for, for the first round? Yeah. So that guy, I previously teched twice. I think I might've pinned it once actually, but I just 
beating the brakes off of him. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is going to be fine. Like, But all of a sudden, halfway through the first period, I have a panic attack almost. Mm. And I just can't breathe. Like, I'm just wrestling, hoping that something doesn't go wrong. You're in the black hole, man. You're just wrestling in the black hole. Yeah. Like, I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. And it felt like I was just so slow. I couldn't. I, didn't, yeah, I forgot my technique. But I managed to get a takedown in the first period and I just like it kind of relieved a little bit of pressure but I still like I felt like I couldn't breathe still so I get off and he gets a he gets an escape and it's 2-1 going into the second period and I choose bottom I get out just how I normally would and then he chooses down and if he gets out like there's a huge shot that I lose this match because my defense isn't great. My, like, I just, I can't do this. And I turn him, I get two points Mm -hmm. and then he gets out almost instantly. And thankfully my defense, like just does me well. And I win the match. And right after that match, I just, I'm I'm back in the, we're in like little hallways at Wells. Yeah. The hallways. Yeah. Weird. Um, it, they're, yeah, they are kind of, they're <laughs> like, like an underground fortress yeah. for like the Nazis or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's weird. Um, but I'm there with my teammates too, cause we had Leo and Mamadi qualify that year. Mm-hmm. So I'm with them and I can't, I can't leave the arena right now. Like, it's not like I can just get up and go. So I'm there and I'm just like, I cannot breathe. Like something's going on. I can't breathe. Yeah. And the coaches are like, what's going on? Like nobody has an idea what's going on. And I go home that night and I'm just, I'm full panic attack. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like I just get sick. Like it's just just crazy sick all of a sudden. And my parents are doing everything they can. And like, I took a really hot shower, like with like a, a, almost like a seltzer tablet, like just clears out your sinuses Mm -hmm. and whatnot. And that helped out for a little bit, but it wasn't like a permanent fix. So the next day is Friday, like you have Friday morning and then you have Friday night. So Friday morning I wrestle again and I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great all of a sudden. And I you got your, you got your, yeah. you got your, that first one out of the way. Yeah. yeah so I, sure. I feel great all of a sudden and I just, I tech him. It was seamless. Like it felt great. Um, and then I know I have to wrestle again that day. Like yeah. you have one more, one more, and then you're in the state finals. One more, and you're one more closer to goal. So I go out there, and that semifinals match was crazy because you're with so many people, right? And it's just it's just one of those crazy experiences. And yeah, you could definitely you could see it in your face on the interview. Yeah. Just like you, it's like your eyes are just like you're yeah. there, but you're in your own world too. Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't know exactly where you are sometimes. Um, but I get, I win, like I in the second period pin him, and like I just trusted my instincts and I went for a fireman's and pinned him. Yeah, and did exactly what my coaches told me to do. So get done with that, go out have interviews, and then it's straight on to Saturday. There's no more focus on Saturday night now. Like, screw school, screw, screw all <laughs> this. Like, it's Saturday night now. Yeah, Saturday night. Um, So, like, this is what my entire season has led up to. And at this point, the guy that I've lost to twice in this year is out of the tournament. He didn't even place. So, I'm feeling great. And yeah. I've already outplaced this guy at Independence. Like, I beat him at, I beat him at Bob Sharp, the Ankeny tournament. Mm-hmm. It was close match. Great match. But... I just felt something. And so I go, I get prepared for Saturday way and take the entire day off. I'm barely doing anything. I'm warmed up in the morning just to get kind of things going. And so get things going and then get, get things going at night and I'm feeling good. And I go out there and don't wrestle my best match. Like um, first period, I don't think I did very well and, second period I think I tied it up and then third period he was up by one or yeah I think he was up by one and then I got a takedown and then 
I put him to his back as well. Yep. Yeah, this entire tournament. I totally thought you were going to pin him too. Like, yeah, I've yeah. been underneath you before yeah. like that. And it's just, it, you're so strong. You're really strong there. I think at that moment, it was kind of one of those things where like, didn't know exactly what to do. Um, surprised yourself, maybe surprised myself entirely. Like, I think I threw him as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, he was trying to he was trying to step in, to throw you, yeah. and you countered him, and you put him right on his back, and he had his arms folded up. Yeah, I remember my I totally remember thought my you were parents. Gonna get the fall. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, my parents. Um, they thought that I was done. Yeah, like, they told me after the fact. Um, but like just in that split second, and I've only thrown one kid prior this year, and it was in an independence finals. I didn't get any points. <laughs> so I was so like putting him to his back and that completed me putting everybody in the state tournament to their back. Yeah. Just just like one of those things like I've worked hard at being good at top and two of the times that I put somebody to their back I wasn't even on top. Right, right. <laughs> so I had that happen and we uh we had like I don't even know how many people come up to me after that. Um, a lot of a lot of interviews. Um, but obviously, like one of the most memorable ones was me saying that all I want is ice cream, and right after that, I got my tub of ice cream. But so, like, felt good and whatnot. So, so what did that feel like? I mean, obviously, like things are going on in the moment, and you're not really. It's probably not settling in all the way. But to join that list of you know, especially being uh, Des Moines Public Schools, yeah. you know, like it had been a long time since they'd had a state champion at, and then out of Lincoln as well, yeah. you know, to join that list um, of state champion. What does that feel like for you to even have your picture up on the roundhouse <laughs> and, you know, see your... I mean, I mean, like, it's just one of those things where I've been, I was training so hard for this one moment yeah. and all of a sudden I get this moment. And I didn't know how to feel like it was just one of those crazy surreal things like coming from a school that isn't isn't like the most wealthy, doesn't have necessarily the best like support for coaches and athletes and whatnot. As some of these other schools like it was just one of those crazy things to just even be in this moment. So I didn't know how to feel and I knew I was pretty lucky to even be in that position because of like started going to big game i was driving i was driving an hour and a half on the weekends some days to go and talk to dylan even if it, like i wasn't even wrestling some days mm-hmm. and i'd go up there and i'd talk to dylan and he'd give me advice and like thank you and head out and head back home yeah so just some of those days like it was just kind of surreal because all of a sudden all my hard work and driving and time and effort and all this just put into it and i didn't know how to feel and after the fact, like I had, I had plenty of time to realize like what's going on. Um, so that's, that's kind of when it kicked in a little bit, like it was a lot, a lot of time afterwards where, um, you, you don't really know, you don't really know how it, how it should be. Right. And like everybody after they like when they're up in the blood like nosebleeds and they're watching these state finals and they're not in high school yet like they're talking about all these celebrations that they're gonna do and yeah yeah all this sort of thing <laughs> and all i could do was like i could point at roland and like, even before you got your hand raised you kind of did a little yeah like did it like it was just like because he's been there every single step of the way. Like he's been there throughout my elementary middle school, like yeah. all of that. And like, he's been there since day one. So like he's, he's seen all the hard work and like, that's all I could do. Like you talk about taking off your ankle bands and throwing them up in the air and celebrating and all this sort of stuff. But when you're in the moment, like sometimes there's just disbelief almost where yeah. You don't know what to do. And would I go back and change any of that? No. 
because like because it looked very humble. I I liked and it what looked I, authentic. I liked what I did, yeah. and it was it was me. Yeah, like I'm not I'm not somebody to sit here and showboat and That's do right. all this. So it was just like stay 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 to earth almost. Like you're not. It was almost like you're not. I'm not. I'm not better than the next guy. I'm not better than. I'm not necessarily a better human than the guy that I just beat. Like he's still a great human. Like there's there's no point in that. So. Yeah, you're humble when you win, and you're humble when you lose. Yeah. Um. And I'm grateful that uh, I've gotten to know you, <laughs> and we have these cool connections between your dad and you yeah, know, like you know, and we got to share the mat with each other in jujitsu as well. So, yeah. um. I've, you know, being a Lincoln alumni and, and having that in our history as well. So, um, I appreciate you coming by today, Mickey, and I wish you the best of luck in your future at Iowa. Um, and I look forward to seeing much more of you. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me.